Hi everyone, this is Jim. Uh, I bought a new Go book uh, recently called Learn to Play Go. It's a beginner book and it's written by uh, Janice Kim and um, I think there's a co-author. Yeah, Janice Kim and uh, Jong Soo Hyun, a Korean nine dan, and Janice Kim is an American three dan, both professional players. And um, it's the first book in a series. Learn to Play Go is a whole series and I have volume one, A Master's Guide to the Ultimate Game. And let's see, what's the uh, publication date? This is the third edition, and it was published in 2010. Anyway, I'll have the book details in the description. I just wanted to mention that. I think it's a pretty good beginner book, and I've just been going through it. I mean, I mostly bought this because I wanted to get a whole series of books, and there's this is like a five-volume series. I wanted to have something I could kind of work through and try and improve. And I, I just started off with the beginner book because I wanted to see if there was anything I had missed. And um, I did come across an interesting uh, tactic called the pin, and I wanted to talk about that here. So let's uh, give an example of the pin. And um, by the way, this is called Oi Otoshi, Oi Otoshi in uh, Japanese. And um, let's see if we have the Korean name. The Korean name is Chuk Chuk Su, or Chopping Off the Tail, and the Japanese name is Oi Otoshi, Chasing and Fleeing. In Japanese. So I'd heard of this uh, a technique before, but I didn't really have a good idea of what it meant. I'd heard of it under the Japanese name Oi Otoshi. I'm not so familiar with the name uh, pin, although maybe maybe that's an idea taken from chess. Uh, you know, a chess, when you have a pin piece, it can't move. And this way, it's this is a, a group of stones which can't escape. So let's uh, put one of the positions on the board. Uh, black is going to be attacking white in these uh, game. So white's got a couple of stones here. And they are loosely connected to some stones on the outside. Yep. Back up. Meant to play there. And then there. So that's the setup. It's, um, it's uh, Black's turn to move. Do you have any idea how you might uh, kill those stones? And uh, obviously these stones on the outside are safe. So really we're talking about the, the two stones in the center. And now in the, uh, the uh, video I did on connecting, these stones are kind of connected um, because this is a connection underneath. And for example, if black plays here, uh, white can chop that off and then fill in. And the same thing on this side. But there is a weakness in this connection. It's a combination of the fact that it's not a direct connection and the fact that these stones are already a little bit um, uh, surrounded, so they, they're weak. This is a weak group of stones that is only indirectly connected to the outside, and because of that, they're vulnerable. And the simplest way to uh, attack them is just to play here, and that forces these stones to connect. If they, if uh, actually White's best move is just to, to play somewhere else, like here, and give up those two stones, but just just to see what would happen if after black, after black plays here, if white tries to connect, then you can cut it off here. So it's the fact that there's uh, two connection points is really the downfall of these two stones. So they're too weak to live. So that's an example of the pin. And now this is related, I did a video, uh, my, my 12th video in this series called the, the Faulty Hinge. Now the Faulty Hinge is my own terminology, so I didn't, uh, I made that up on my own. But um, there's a certain uh, correlation between this technique and the Faulty Hinge technique. And let's, let's show that in another example here. So let's uh, back up, put some more stones on the board. Um, let's see, let's start over here this time just to be in a different spot. Black is here, white is here, is here, white is here, black has a stone on the outside here, white has some stones here. And then some stones here. and it's Black's turn to move. And once again, you see the same kind of idea. You see a weak group of stones, a group of stones that's nearly surrounded, only two liberties, and it's connected to the outside through two connections. So it's a little bit indirect. And uh, what, watch what happens here when you connect, or when you attack. So you attack this on the outside, 
and if white fills in right here. This formation here is what I called a faulty hinge. I was referring to this uh, spot here as the hinge. The idea is that this is like connected to this group uh, through a hinge which uh, can be interrupted. And when you go here, there's actually no way for these stones to escape. They get, they get captured no matter what white plays. So, so that's uh, an example of the relationship between what I called the faulty hinge earlier and what is known more generally as the pen. So, so this is kind of a more general version of the concept I was, I was promoting in my faulty hinge video. So I, I like this. I just wanted to uh, uh, show this to you. And then I wanted to show one other technique. There's another very similar setup. Let's uh, back up um, a little bit. Yeah, and let's extend this one more. So say white is there, black is here, and then white has some stones this way. And it's black's turn to move. Um, and now this doesn't work actually. The faulty hinge uh, only applies when there's like one space here and one space here. Here white can connect and then when you try and attack this cutoff group, it's got two liberties. So, so it's possible for white to uh, counterattack this stone and uh, possibly escape. Uh, that, that, that was the wrong move, wasn't it? Has to attack this way. And now you don't have time to capture these stones because you get caught. And uh, if you try to strengthen that first and then try to capture those stones, you still get caught. So, um, so this is not a faulty hinge situation. This, this hinge is solid enough because there's uh, two liberties there. So let's back up. But there's a better way to play this. So it's Black's turn to move. Can you, or have you, do you have any idea how to play this? This is, I guess, a good tactics quiz for you. See, if you can spot the best move for Black in this position. Okay, uh, I'm going to give the answer away now. So pause the video if you want some time to think about it. Um, the answer is to play here at uh, J13. This is known as a throw-in. That, that, uh, you're throwing that stone into the middle of this uh, formation where it's just going to get captured, but it will remove one of White's liberties when you capture it. And first of all, when you place the stone here, it's attacking these three stones. It's important in all of these that the, the group you're attacking is weak to begin with. It only had two liberties. Take away one of those liberties, it's immediately an Atari, and you're just going to capture it. If you can play it M13, it'll be dead. So White's only choice, uh, if he wants to save those stones, is to capture your stone, your throw-in stone. Now when you attack from the outside, once again, if White wants to save those stones, which is not a good idea, he should just give them up at this point, but if White wants to save those stones, he has to fill in here. And now we have the faulty hinge situation. You can cut here, and when White attacks your stone or fills in, you, you just capture that group. So uh, that's how you can use the throw-in to uh, create a faulty hinge. And um, okay, so that was what um, I wanted to cover. I found a few other things in this book, so I think I will do some more videos. I will complete the, uh, well, I, I don't think it'll be necessarily completing the series, but I want to uh, make sure that I have in my uh, video series on Beginning Go uh, everything that's in this uh, first volume of the Learn to Play Go series, and um, and maybe a few other things too. So uh, there will be some more uh, ideas coming up from that uh, series, some more videos coming up based on that book. Um, okay, let's go play a game here. Let's get maybe a 9x9 nine nine game. See if we can create one. Okay, waiting for game. Here's the game. Um, okay, I'm, I've got white this time. My rating has been bouncing, uh, alternating, I should say, between 17Q and 18Q. I'm right on the border. In fact, uh, I was at 18Q in the last game and I just won it, so now I'm at 17Q. So, well, we'll see how I do in this one. Is a comparably strong player, so we're pretty much equally ranked. I have the advantage of Comey, and he has the advantage of the uh, he has the advantage of the first move. So he placed a stone there. If I go for the corner immediately, he can block those two and prevent them from connecting. So there's no particular advantage to choosing this corner over this one. So I think I'll go ahead and choose this corner, which is the furthest from his stones. And so it looks like I'll try and get two corners and he'll try and get two corners. 
and we will fight over the board. Uh, well, let's see if I can expand here from this corner. Okay, so I've got a reasonably large territory over here in the corner. Oh, he's trying to uh, capture my stone. Yeah, okay, that was not... Uh, <laughs> I still make that mistake all the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't play that way. Uh, that stone is just dead. Okay, but it's not the end of the game. Shows the kind of dumb mistakes I still make, though. Okay, let's um, expand in this direction from the corner. So he's got a lot of space over here. And he's going to try and preserve it. Let's see. <laughs> Are we going to do the same thing? If he comes here and I go here and he comes here, that's winning that stone. So when he comes here, I have to connect. Okay. I don't want to give up another stone to the same silly tactic. Okay. So I could go here or here, but that's only like one point difference. I really need to um, play a bigger move. So let's um, grab this space over here. And either this side or this side were my two choices, and I guess there's a little bit more space on this side. So let's go here. And here. So now I'm threatening to come here and win that stone, so he's got to fill in. And that will give me time to play up here. Okay, he didn't fill in, but that's another way of protecting that connection. So this guy is doing good stuff here. Okay, and he's going to play there. Hmm. Was I too bold? And uh, if I play here, he attacks my stone. So let's try and save this stone first, or should I try and attack his stone? Or both. Let's see. If I go here, he goes here, I go there, he can capture my stone. So let's strengthen my stone first. Surprised that attaching underneath didn't work. That usually works. I guess because I don't have a stone on this side. Detaching underneath works when you have a stone on either side. And I just don't have that here. So uh, he may actually be killing me. <laughs> this group might not have enough space in this corner to live. <laughs> Whereas, uh, you know, his, he's just got a few scattered stones here. But if I attack them, I think he can fill and make eyes there. It looks like that is safe to me. I think this group is safe. I think my group over here in the lower right corner is in danger. And he's probably trying to figure out the most efficient way of killing me. And I think I need to kill his stone. So it's three liberties. One, two, three. He can attack this stone, and it has three liberties. So let's go here and make sure those stones are cut off. This group has one, two, three liberties. So just by pure counting, I think I win his two stones before he wins mine. But there may be tricks. That's not entirely sure. Not entirely sure that those uh, that he can't capture me first in some way. Plays here. I play here. Can he run out in some way? Game paused. Four pauses left for black. I've never used this game pause thing. Need charger. Okay, I'll give him a break here. Okay, it looks like he's back. Ta. Okay, so he played there. So he's given up on these stones. I need to make sure I capture them, because otherwise this group will die. He may be trying to capture mine, though. Let's see, how many liberties? One, two, three. Yeah, I can keep running. And actually, this gives me more space. As long as I'm sure I'm capturing these stones, then um, as I run with these stones, it gives me a little more territory. I just need to make sure I maintain my liberties and then go after these guys to, to uh, win those stones. Okay, so he's attacking over here. 
Let's see if I can keep this guy cut off. Okay. Um, let's see. What should I do? Let's, let's make sure this is alive over here. That's what I should do. Make sure I don't get killed on this side as well. B9 was a misstep. B8, B9. Oh, his misstep? Mistap. But never mind. I didn't think it was a bad move. I mean, I, it forced a reaction, so... Uh, yeah, he fills in there. Okay, so let's um, get as much space as I can. I, I place a stone here to make sure that uh, I have two eyes over here. And if he plays at A5, I can play at uh, A6. And he has to fill in. So I have a little bit of territory over here. And um, let's see. And this is safe, right? That's got two eyes. And that's got two eyes. Both, both groups of white stones are looking at the two eyes. So let's expand out here and try and kill some of his space. So how much space? The only space he really has is this corner over here. Okay, so I need to, he's forcing me to, to take these stones. And I better take them. So the only space he has is over here. I think um, this space down here is contested. This space is contested. He may have a few spaces up here. So I think actually I have more space than him. I have all these spaces. I have only three over here. I have two more over here. Okay, so he's solidly connecting. Let's um, kill this stone, make sure that's this group is all mine. One, two liberties. Okay, we'll take there. So, probably not a necessary move. Um, let's attack here. And uh, fill in here, attacking that stone. And uh, let's see, there's a cut here. He captures. Play here, he can fill in. I guess it doesn't gain anything. Maybe it gains a point. If I play here and he doesn't answer, I can play here and threaten to capture those stones. But that takes two moves to force him to play one move. So let's see, does he have this group? Oh, this group is connected to, okay, it's got an eye here and an eye here and an eye there. And let's see, he's got an eye here and I have these stones. It looks like I have more space and um, I'm going to pass anyway. I should have gone B2. Let's see, where was B2? B2. Oh, maybe thinks I could have killed that group. Okay, let's pass here. He passes. Okay, what's the score? Yeah, he only got 11 points and I got 23. So, hey, good game for me. And uh, I win by 12 and a half points. So I got five and a half points of Comey, but I won on the board too. I had 15 points of territory, three prisoners, and he had nine points of territory and two prisoners. So uh, good game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.